Alyssa, and I go, <clears throat> David Bowie is looking for a lead dancer. I think you're perfect for it. She goes, who's that? Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Dance Dish, where the dance ends and the dish begins. My name is Pussy Control, and I am your guest host for today. I would like to personally welcome our live audience. Today, we are getting dance history. All three of our guests paved the path so that dancers, choreographers, and stars can live, and we're gonna hear all about it. Please give it up for the legendary Tony Selznick. <laughs> Surprise. The legendary Billy Goodson. And of course, the legendary Julie McDonald. I'm so curious, because you have been doing this for a minute and a half. Oh, yeah. And a half. <laughs> and I know you've got some fun stories about celebrities and things. I, I'll just tell you this one really have. great story. Only one? Well, maybe okay. two. Okay. okay. So, yeah. one of um, my early clients at, was Melissa Hurley. Does everybody remember? Amazing she answer. was Legend. like gorgeous in every way inside out, beautiful dancer, everything. She worked all the time. Anyway, I, Tony Basil was asked to choreograph David Bowie's Glass Spider Tour. They were looking for a lead dancer. I sent a lot of people in, not a lot, all sorts of dancers that they were looking for a lead. So I call Melissa and I go, <clears throat> David Bowie is looking for a lead dancer. I think you're perfect for it. She goes, who's that? <laughs> that was my first thing. I went, whoa, okay. Well, uh, you know. You didn't say Google him. Is it Google I didn't around say around Google him. I, said, I, had, I had to tell her who he was. So she goes to the audition and she books it. And she was extraordinary. Well, cut to a few months later and they're dating. And they're dating really, really like he was head over heels in love with her. And so she said, I'd like to bring him into the office to, to meet you. And I went, okay. And um, we were at Hollywood and Highland. So I said to my office, David Bowie's coming. Don't freak out. Don't make a big deal, okay? Just be cool. So she brings him to the office. As it was, they were very early. So they sat in the lobby for a few minutes and he chain smokes. Our receptionist saved all of his cigarette butts. <laughs> but the, <laughs> she was trying to be cool, but she was like not emptying the ashtray, you know? <laughs> so that was for starters. So they come into the office and they're talking. And of course, I'm trying to maintain, like, I love David Bowie. So it was like, for me, it was like a big deal. And he was just so cool. He, he was just so real and wonderful, but it was, what was funny was every person who worked for me found an excuse to come into the office. <laughs> um, hey, I need Julie, this paper I, I need this paper sign. Can I have to fax this? And they did one by one, they came in. But um, and he ended up wanting to marry her, but she had a pretty good head on her shoulders. She said, uh, rock and roll life's not for me. And as you know, she ended up marrying Patrick Cassidy and 25 years later they have I guess two or three kids, and anyway, that was one of my favorite celebrity stories. And then, okay, something happened just recently that I just love this story. Barry Lathers asked to work with, I mean, another legend, Hans Zimmer. Do you guys know Hans Zimmer? He's won like 12 Oscars, right? He, he's the most extraordinary composer. And he's going out on a world tour, a European tour primarily. So I'm dealing with the attorney back and forth, very nice, trying to make his deal. And I'm asking for creative director credit, plus I'm asking for this much money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All of a sudden, out of the blue, our assistant says, Julie, Hans Zimmer's on the phone. <laughs> it was Hans Zimmer himself saying, Julie, I take the creative director credit. I went, okay. Uh, Julie, I can't pay him that much money. I went, okay. <laughs> I'm like, whatever you say. I was like, I'm bad to go. What a nice guy that he called you himself. He called me though. himself, Hans Zimmer. And I was like, you know, kind of like a puddle. I just gave in to everything. <laughs> 
Yeah, everything. Yeah, you're yeah, like, okay, that, fine. Whatever you say. Other than that, she's a shark. I negotiate. Right. <laughs> other than that, other than that, oh, we got a call in our office once. Reception says, Warren Beatty's on the phone. Now, I had met Warren Beatty at a party at Jeffrey Hornaday's house because Jeffrey had just finished doing, um, what was the, uh, the movie he did with Madonna? Dick Tracy. 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 And I had met Warren Beatty there, and I have to say, he was one of the nicest, most extraordinary people I've ever talked to in my whole life. And he was giving all the attention to me, and I was like, oh my goodness. But I get a call from the office for him, and he says to me, I'm looking for a phone number for Sarah Elgart. <laughs> He wanted to date Sarah, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you hate when that happens? Yeah, it was really disappointing. <laughs> but... but you know, rejection is protection sometimes. Well, yeah, absolutely. Right. And, and it was very shortly thereafter that that he met and married Annette Benning. So it was like at least I had my moment with him at this he did, party. And you can take that forward. He was incredible. All he talked, he says, you know, my sister's a dancer. His sister Shirley MacLaine. Yes. And he yeah. just everything yeah. that he talked about was related back to me, not to himself. He was a really amazing man. Yeah, that's a good conversation. Yeah. With someone who can like, Great make you feel like you yeah. are the only person. Yeah, exactly. It's like presidents have that. Yeah, it's like the, you're the only person in the room, and Russell yeah. was like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. was Russell like that. Clark was like that. No matter who he was talking to, his eyes yeah. never wavered yeah. from you. Yeah, that's true. And he, you were the most important person in the room at the time. Can we do a toast to Russell? I was just getting ready to say <laughs> that. that. No, I literally was going to say that because that is a thread that has us. tied all yeah. of us together. He kind of actually validated my craziness, my shave your head, color your hair, you know, gold, everything. Yeah. I want to toast to Russell Clark, wait, to all the stars, and to Julie McDonald, legendary Julie McDonald. Yes, thank you. And of course, let's all toast. The dance dish. Dance dish. Five, six, seven, eight.